So the background is that Sam George, the Honorable Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, had complained that a young man had died um, um, of, not, of, not really of the illness, but he had died of the infrastructural deficit, of the infrastructural deficit that's, um, that we have in our medical system. Okay, so let's look at what she wrote in response. Dear Honorable, referring to Sam George over there, it goes as follows. I offer you my condolences, but I also say welcome to our world. Reading your piece, I am angry, I am sad, I am pissed. I feel your frustration and your pain, but I am tempted to think you just returned to Ghana last week after many years stay abroad because this is what we go through daily here. It is about bets. It's not about bets, no. It's about many things in the healthcare system. Okay, so, uh, yes, next page. She says, I am a pediatrician and I speak for the, ch for the children. Many hospitals do not have the equipment children need to help them survive and thrive. Many hospitals do not have neonatal intensive care units. We are creating awareness about neonatal jaundice this month, and that's why uh, Dr. Najama Glover is here about creating awareness about neonatal jaundice this month. So I will mention, I will just mention phototherapy machines that are used to treat newborns with jaundice before it damages their brains. Okay, so we'll go back to uh, uh, Najama Glover if we need any explanation. So uh, crew, pay attention so you can pick her on the shot. Okay. Many of our district hospitals do not have these, let alone radiant warmers and incubators or infusion pumps or monitors. Oh, and childhood cancer is not even covered by health insurance. Okay, let's take it one after the other. So first of all, we want to understand um, phototherapy machines. What are they, Dr. Glover? So they are equipment that have blue light. Basically, that particular um, range wavelength is able to convert the bilirubin, which is what gives the yellow color in jaundice that we see, mm -hmm. to a water-soluble form that can be excreted from the body. So basically it helps us to bring down the levels of bilirubin in babies so that it doesn't go high enough to damage the brain as she mentioned. And it's a light? Yes, it's just light. And you don't have it in the hospital? So very few facilities have it. And this is something that should be available in every facility that is conducting deliveries, which is most of our facilities in the country. But majority of them do not have it. And we end up with babies um, having to be referred just because they need photo light from a far off place, having to travel. We know our roads and all the dangers on it, just to receive photo. And well, the fortunate ones will get to you in time to get the photo. Others, by the time they get to you, um, the damage has started already. And that should not be happening. Damage to means child. they die? Damage means the brain is damaged. And it's damaged permanently for life. Um, and yes, some do die. Damage the point where... So how does a person continue living after the few days when the brain is damaged? What, what, what does he do? So you have children who, um, they're going up and they cannot talk, they cannot walk. Um, generally, they are not able to function. Their motor function, um, using their hands, all that, it's, it's impaired. How, so much, how much is the light? So there are different brands. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the brands I saw today was about just going for about 22,000. And in fact, they are conducting a promotion. So if you can get two, you get one for free. 22,000 Ghana cities? Yes, 22,000 Ghana. That's how much one cost? Yes. About for the fire how many fly. would we need in the whole country? About how many? Well, if I look at the fact that um, well, you have over... Let me use Kolebu for example. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing close to 10,000 deliveries mm -hmm. um, annually. Okay. Um, oh, you're doing 10,000 children are born in Kolebu every, every year? Every year. 10,000? Close to. Close to. We're, not, we're doing about 9,000, 8,000. Is, is that how quickly our population increases? Yeah. Unfortunately, not all of them are surviving because of the problems we have in this system. I so, see. Okay. Yes, but that, that's about how many deliveries we have in just Kolebu. But if you have, say, 10,000, you mm -hmm. need 10,000 of the machine? No. Ah. So um, 
let's say um, you, you have about 60% of newborns who would have, mm -hmm. or the term newborns who would have jaundice. Mm -hmm. So you should be looking at... Did you say 50%? 60. 60? Six term babies. What's term baby? Those who go the full nine months. Okay. If baby is preterm, chances are 80% that they will develop jaundice. Oh, this is serious. So those are Six, the numbers. 60%. Yes. Of babies of born regularly, like yes. within nine after nine months. Yes. Would have that could have that. Could have jaundice, yes. Sixty percent. Sixty percent. Those born earlier, eighty percent. Up to eighty percent could have jaundice. And we don't have enough of this photo machine that costs nope. twenty two thousand. No, we don't. Okay. When she goes and we are doing the politics, I'll, I'll tell you something about this matter. You know, I'll go back to something on the politics. I don't want to involve doctors in politics. Let's get back onto her article. Okay, and the one who wrote this article is, uh, you can see her photograph there. She's called Dr. Adoma Jumofoko Odami. All right, so let me go back to that one. Many of our district hospitals do not have these. That's a photo and all the other machines, let alone radiant warmers. When we get back to her, she'll tell us what radiant warmers are and incubators or infusion pumps or monitors. Oh, and ch childhood cancer is not even covered by health insurance. You felt pain because the child of someone you know died. And despite your calls, you couldn't save the child. That's how I feel every Thank single you. day exactly. I work in this country. Welcome to my world. That's quite, that's, that's harsh, doctor. That's the truth. That's the truth? That's how we feel when we go to work every day. And it's difficult watching a human being die, especially when oh, it's a human being. But they say you people see it every day. But there's a child, I it can understand there's a and child. And it doesn't make it any easier. Seeing it every day doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't make it any easier on the family that lose a child. It doesn't make it any easier on the healthcare worker. Who, but more importantly, that child has a right to live. A basic right to life that we should never compromise on as a nation and that is what we are doing mm. so she's not exaggerating no wow she says that's how i feel every day okay let's move on she says you sam george have the liberty of talking politics and placing blame at people's doorstep and therefore can sleep easy i don't have that liberty as no child votes in ghana every child has red blood no child has a mixture of red, white, and blue, which is the MPP colors blood, or green, black, white, and red blood, which is the NDC color. The blood of children, ah, she left out CPP, didn't she? Sorry. <laughs> okay. No child has a mixture of red, white, and blue blood, or green, black, white, and red blood. The blood of children is red, pure. The red blood cells of children are not shaped like umbrellas or coconut trees or elephants. Wow. The red blood cells of children are all little circles. You can easily turn this into a fix the country or hashtag fix your attitude chant. But I cannot. I will always remember the eyes of the parents as they watch their child suffer and die. I will remember the gasping breath and I will know what could have been done but wasn't done because of the decisions and inactions of people. It's made my day. Recently, I was talking about the people making the decision in Ghana. I said the difference between Ghana and Europe, England, Australia, anywhere, is the difference between the two countries. It's not poverty. It's not money and wealth. That's not the difference. The, the dichotomy is not money and wealth. The dichotomy is not weather. It's not sunshine and winter. The dichotomy is not skin color. It's not black and white. The dichotomy is the people who make the decisions in England and the people who make the decisions in Ghana. How do we choose the people who make the decisions? Now, you can verify this easily by finding out that in Ghana, you have Kolebu Teaching Hospital. People are making decisions for Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Who elects them? Then you have uh, Leicester Hospital. Then you have Tema Women's Hospital, private hospitals, where people prefer to go. Why do they prefer to go there? It's not because they have better doctors. In fact, they will tell you Kolebu actually has better doctors. It's not because they have better doctors, but it's the people who are making the decisions. How do we choose our people who make the decisions? We need to have a frank and honest discussion in this country. And I support Sam Jonah on that one alone. He said, let's change the constitution. Let's have a way in which we can have a process to select the people who make the decisions. All these district assemblies, 
Who is, who is taking the people there? Who is making the decisions? The other day we said, let's elect our district assemblies so that we can, they can be accountable to us. We said, no, we'll come back to that conversation. But remember that we have said it on this program, that the difference between us and them, the North and the South, that is the rich North and the poor South in globalization, is not weather, it's not the color of the people, it's not wealth, it's the people who make the decisions. Okay, so we go on. He said, I will remember the gasping breath. And I will know what could have been done, but wasn't done because of the decisions and inactions of people. Okay, let's move on. But enough of this. Let's focus on the way forward. Do not let this child's death be in vain. Honorable Sam George, find out what really went wrong. Why did powerful men need to get involved before things could happen? Why were there no beds? Why couldn't another hospital handle it? Why did the child have to cross regions to get care? Is it a matter of equipment or personnel or both? What will it take to prevent this from happening next week? Now, that's a question I'll be asking you, uh, Najma, when I come. She says, what will it take to prevent this from happening next week? Just next week, she's anticipating that it could happen again because they say it happens all the time. Please, get into your car and drive across. Trace the journey this child made and find out from the people on the ground what really happened. Do not call before you arrive in the hospital, else you will meet a hospital scrapped clean and painted white with dinner fit for a king served to you. And it will be from the hospital's mega resources. Money that could have bought, money that could have bought a defil, defibrillator. Please, what's that? Defibrillator. Defibrillator. What's yeah. it used for? So typically, if you watch in the movies, that's what the, they say they use it. To, they used to shock the patient. The one to shock him back to life. Exactly. When, okay. When the the heart you use that for children. Certain, yes, we can use. We have some for children. Yes. Okay. But it's again not readily what's, available. What's, can you say it again? Dif, dif, defibrillator. Defibri, defibrillator. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, okay. Thanks. All right. The. She says, go unannounced, telling some judge that attend the hospital unannounced. She says, go unannounced and get the true answers. Talk to the people on the ground, not those in suits. And that's not all. When you find the problems, come up with the solutions that are devoid of politics. That's the most important. Solutions devoid of politics. Exactly. What can you, and that's what I'll be talking about uh, uh, tonight after we are done with our doctors, when we talk about national security. When we talk about the Caleb Kuda saga, solutions devoid of politics. Okay, come up with solutions that are devoid of politics. What can you, with all your power, do to turn things around at your level? Let it be a memorial. Let it be a memorial to that lost child. That's what matters. Okay, do not tell me that it's not your duty to do this fact-finding task and that there is a whole ministry for health. I didn't train as a telephonist, nor letter writer, nor fundraiser. I learned medicine, but if I don't write letters, fundraise, or make thousands of calls, in addition to clinical work, the kids will die in my hands. If I don't piece together a Voltec bottle and tubes, I can't get bubble CPAP for a baby. What's that? CPAP. CPAP, what's that? Yes. So um, what she's describing is a modified one, but basically it helps you to supply oxygen to the lungs of the child mm -hmm. with some amount of pressure for those who are struggling to breathe. That way they, it reduces the work they have to do to breathe and so they don't get tired easily. Um, mm. So yes. I see, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, she says, I, 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 I ca if I don't do the Voltic thing, I can't get bubble craps for a baby, for a baby. I am not a biomedical engineer, she says. If I don't fix onion bulbs on a wooden frame, I can't get a warmer for newborns. I am not a carpenter, but we all go the extra mile so that Ghanaian, so the Ghanaian child can live. So get on the road for this fact-finding journey. You may realize that everyone has the blood of the dead child on his or her hands, from road contractors to the ministers, everyone. It goes on. And that's not all. On Monday or whenever, kindly go to Parliament. 
Talk to your colleagues and pour your heart out to them. Remember the emotion that you felt as you poured your heart out on Facebook and let the change uh, begin. Marshal your colleague MPs to do something to save the lives of Ghanaian children. If they even adopt the kids' ward in their district hospitals, buy phototherapy machines for their hospitals, and ICUs, and get childhood cancers on insurance, I will be less pissed. We are all sad and angry and pissed, let's, but let it bring change. Don't let the child's death be in vain. Red is the only color that matters. You're sincerely sad, angry, pissed, Aduma. I think this deserves an award. I mean, this really yes. deserves an award. If you're watching at home, a uh, round of applause. Um, I'm walking over to her to, to learn about the other things and talk about it. This is, this is very serious, by the way. Okay, so now tell us about yourself. Pediatrician, isn't it? What yes. does that mean? That I have trained to take care of children. Trained to take care of children? <laughs> yes. You cannot take care of adults. Um... Well, I, I, I did a basic training. Medicine, you, you learn to take care of everybody. Mm -hmm. But I specialized in, so I've done further studies in taking care of children. So I'm more equipped for that. Mm -hmm. I see, that's interesting. Okay, so she asked the most important question. She said that, how can we be sure that, what should we do so that this doesn't happen next week? So we need to make a lot of changes as a country. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about, various ailments that children have and the equipment we need to manage them. A lot of these things are very simple things. Um, we started with a newborn jaundice, which is causing a lot of brain damage and death. We are losing a lot of children who would have been great, great human resource for this country. And yet their brains are getting damaged because of the jaundice. All you need is a phototherapy unit in every facility that is conducting deliveries and seeing newborn children. So, so that means Kolebu have one? Or no, so Kolebu, Kolebu, Kolebu has more than one. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, even that, with the number of uh, deliveries that we conduct, often we find that it's not enough. You know? But most of the other facilities may not have it, especially when you go beyond Accra. They don't have it. So they have to send a baby all the way here just to come and get phototherapy light. She talks about CPAP, which is used to help babies who are struggling to breathe. Generally, babies struggling to breathe, when they get tired, unlike you and me who breathe without thinking about it, when they get tired, they are tired and they just stop. All we need are these CPAP machines to help them breathe so that it, it, it just adds pressure so that they don't struggle as much to breathe. And if you have that in just your regional facilities, all the places where you are conducting deliveries, you should be able to help one baby or the other. Now, you would always have the situation where a baby will still need to be moved to a higher facility. We have a lot of ambulances in this country, and yet not one of them has an incubator, a transport incubator, for a preterm baby. So if I'm transporting a 1 kg baby, and trust me, some of them come as small as my palm, it means that I have to put that baby in a cot and move on these roads that are probably pothole filled all the way to Accra or to Kumasi or wherever I would get a nickel for that baby. By the time that child arrives, the child is in a worse condition than the child left and the chances of that child surviving are drastically reduced. So it's, it's all these little things that we need to put in place to help our children. Children, she, she mentions childhood cancers. Children with cancer have just a few of their laboratory work on, it's a general lab work that is on insurance. Beyond that, their medications and all others are not on it. And yet, I mean, I'm a woman. I'm happy that like breast cancer has some of its medications on insurance. I'm, I'm grateful for that. But why can't the children have the same or more? They are the most vulnerable. I keep saying that these are people, you know, we all would save and prepare for the future. Everybody is saving something they are earning now for retirement. And yet our greatest resource in this country, we have neglected. They are our children. If you leave a child and that child goes up anyhow, you get some brain damage and the child makes some legislation or some other 
rule that affects you later when you're old. You won't understand and you won't accept it. But it was our fault from the beginning. We failed them from the beginning. And it is not one color or another, as she said. It is all of us. We all have a part to play. She mentions it so well. From the road contractor, that road that isn't done well, to if I am not nice to um, them at the entrance and receive them properly, to the infrastructure that is not available there, to them having to even pay for oxygen. It is not right that a child has to go through all that. And it is so not fair. And I think it's about time that we sit up together, everybody, hands on board, and make some changes. Who are we blaming? All of us. Mm. Who, whose responsibility is it to buy this for Kolebu? Who, who's going to buy it? I don't think it's one person's responsibility. Like I said, all of us together. Okay. So I'm asking you questions outside medicine. So let me, let me come back yes, to the point. But so how big is this machine? Is it like that? Oh, it, it's bigger. Maybe mm. about, maybe about here. Oh, okay. Hmm. So for you, so do you have summer colibou at all? Yes, yes, we do. But, but we it's do. In, in, in adequate. Okay. Yes, we, 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 especially in the unit where I work, we always have an overflow. Um, there are always a lot more requiring than... So is it one baby at a time? Yes, usually we would have one baby under it at a time. But when you have more than one and you need to save all their lives, you have to pay. Sometimes if it's two that you need to put under, you put under. But will it, it do two or it will do half, half? Or it won't be as effective as it should be if... You it was just one. It was just one to one baby. Hmm. 